Um, if you're a good girl, raise your hand. You're a good girl. Um, if you hate squirrels, raise your hand. <gasps> you hate squirrels? Um, if you like to eat cheese crackers, raise your hand. Higher, higher. That's so good. I like them too. I'll share them with you. Um, what else can we talk about? Um, if you sleep 19 hours a day, roughly, raise your hand real high. Yeah, you do. You sleep so much. Look, we're matching. Bye. I recently acquired, got another few yards of this linen blend to make a Charlie Captain. I got this spectacular small bit of yardage from Stitch Sew Shop. This is going to be some sort of sleeveless top, maybe an Ashton top from Helen's Closet. It's a Monstera print on this navy background, which I think makes it wearable for me. Um, it was on a white background previously that I have seen, and I just didn't think I could I could do that one. And then this is Mariner Cloth by Allison Glass, which I really love. And I think this will be a wraparound skirt or maybe pants, summer pants. That's all cotton. I think that's all I've got. I have some linen on the way, and I just would love to have the bandwidth for sewing right now, for sewing clothes. Um, obviously, there's nowhere to wear them except around my house and my neighborhood. And I've, I've realized that a big part of making clothes is the rush of putting them right on and wearing them out in the world. So I need to sort of reconfigure my relationship with sewing in that respect. Just for now. Just for now. She is completed. So I need to dismantle her and send her off to Mary Beth. It's coming your way, Mary Beth. That was a very fun puzzle. Hello! So, utterly inspired by the fat squirrel, I crocheted a little headscarf, sort of a kerchief, um, using, oh gosh, it was some pattern from Church Mouse Yarns in Washington State, I believe, and I used um, Jameson and Smith, um, just sort of bits and bobs I had around. This color here is the outlier, obviously. I didn't like it, so I didn't put it back in elsewhere, but I don't mind it being there. And I will take a picture of myself wearing it. I'm wearing the yell today, it's chilly. And yeah, I'm kind of, it didn't take long at all. I really loved it. I think I used an e-hook and it was a lot of fun. And you know, why wash your hair? Just wear a kerchief. A rat, make me a rat again, that was funny. It listened. Oh, My clematis is blooming, and I just wanted to show you how big the first blossoms are generally biggest my hand bigger than my hand aren't they beautiful I've been picking them and these are the some of the newer ones that start out really deep purple these have been bleached a bit by the Sun oh. but I love eco printing with these so I'm gonna pick a few lovely I made a little quarantine meme not really serious just a little silly dark humor I have sleeve separation on my mid-coast cardigan. I believe I showed you all that I ripped back and took out the gray that I had here. And re the whole thing. So yeah, it's looking just, you know, you just don't need, with the ornateness of this pattern, you don't need a third color. That's, I think that's what I'm, I've decided. 
and this yarn is the Merlot and I can't remember the name of this one but this is De Rerum Natura French and Iberian Merinos and it's a delight to knit and I'm knitting it on US 8s and 9s because I'm a tight knitter but I really love this particular fabric I'm getting with it. I've made about 45 masks so far and here's the latest batch going out. Look what I purchased from the Woolly Thistle. I'm going to make another very simple uh, seamless um, saddle shoulder a la Elizabeth Zimmerman. And I have three plates of this gorgeous purple. I wanted to get the purple Rauma that Corinne had used for her simple sweater. And it was sold out. It's, I think it's back in stock now, but I thought I love my other, my green Plotilopi sweater. I'm just going to get a purple one. So this has got to be the least expensive sweater purchase you can make. Um, I think total this was maybe $27. I could be wrong, but I don't use all of the third plate. So it's around a $20 sweater, which is excellent. I've been having a lot of fun with this app, Seek. It's free and it's run by some naturalist. Wait, is it naturalist? Are those the nudists? Anyway, you know what I mean. It's nature stuff. Um, so I've been using it to identify plants in the garden and wildflowers and some birds and even a dog and a human being. Although um, it's pretty funny to see how it classified Alice. Yeah, these two are not that similar, but uh, yeah, nature. So tonight I'm embarking on one of my favorite things to do with a Marie Wallen pattern. This weekend I'm casting on the Bressa or Bresse um, car, uh, pullover with some friends and I'm getting ready to color code the charts. I'm going to show you maybe a bit of how I do it without really showing the charts, but isn't that gorgeous? So let's take a look. I have gathered my lovely colors for the Bressa sweater. Um, now this purple is Bramble. These are Jameson's of Shetland and I love them. Let me see if I can name the colors. So we have Bramble, but I'm actually substituting a different color for that one. That's the main color. Then we have moss, my favorite green ever. This is yellow ochre, paprika, tundra, damask, laurel. Okay, this one is, okay, let me, this one is camel, I think, camel. Um, steel, shayla, which is actually quite a bit darker, and I'm a little worried I won't have enough of that. That's left over from, I think, the yell cardigan. And then musket. So 11 colors total, and really I'm just going to use this cone of, oh gosh, what is this again? Bartlett Yarns Mountain Laurel. Never knit from a cone before, so that should be fun. So yeah, that's my basket of contrast colors, except for the bramble, of course. That's a leftover. So down here, there's a little tiny bit of a chart I don't have a printer where I can enlarge things right now, so that's going to be a bit of a pain. But the other charts are smaller and not so bad. And honestly, these are a lot easier than the um, Sam Free charts. Anyway, so I've taken a little bit of yarn for each color. And I've taped it down here next to the symbol. And then I'm going to take, just sort of, what was that? Cover this. I'm going to get some corresponding colored pencils and color in the symbols on the chart, just the squares, and that'll make it a lot easier to knit. Okay, got my colors. There they are. And now I just need to fill in these charts, but it's a good start. 
Just one more thought. I'm starting to fill in the gigantic chart, and that's the one that is the smallest in um, size percentage-wise. But you know the reality is you don't have to see the whole chart at a time, and that's the beauty of fair, uh, fair Isle color work. It does help to know what's coming and what came before, especially what came before. But honestly, you just have to know the two colors in the row you're working on. So it's not all that bad when it's said and done. You just have to know the row. Thank you.